What up everybody? Back again with our time unit here. Today we are focused on finding the start time within the hour. So let's wake on up and get to work. So our objective today, today I will be able to find the start time when given the elapsed time and the end time. The last lesson that we did, we were finding the end time, and so today we're just switching that and we're going to go backwards in time to find the start time. Let's take a look at our math vocabulary just to review what we learned last lesson. You don't need to write these down again because you already wrote them down, um, but it's just good to quickly review, especially if you're just kind of hopping in with us for this and you didn't do the last lesson. The start time is the time that an event starts, right? It's pretty obvious. The end time is the time that that event ends. Again, pretty obvious. And then the elapsed time is the amount of time that has passed from the start of an event to the end of an event, okay? Um, and that might be a little bit wordy, but let's take a look at this timeline that we used last lesson to kind of visualize these math vocabulary words. All right, so we're not gonna go through the whole thing again, but just to quickly review, right? If you were making dinner, right, and you started at 7 p.m., we would label that the start time. We view time on a timeline because time flows like a river. And so when we view it on a timeline kind of flat like this, it allows us to see the event in sequential order. If you're a thinking map person, you can make a flow map for that, am I right? Shout out to thinking maps. The elapsed time is the amount of time that it took to, from making dinner to the end when the dinner came out of the oven, right? So it, we spent 15 minutes doing something, five minutes doing something, 30 minutes having it bake in the oven, which made a total elapsed time of 50 minutes. And then the dinner came out of the oven at 7.50, so we labeled that the end time. So that's kind of a visual model, so you can kind of see that. To quickly review, okay, we have um, on our timeline, we use the mountains and the hills strategies. Mountains represent an hour when we show them on the timeline. Now, we're not going to get in that, into that for the, uh, until the next couple lessons because today we're sticking with the third grade standard, which is just doing it within the hour. The hills can be are our minutes, right? And they can be anything. Um, on our timeline we just showed, it was 15 minutes, 5 minutes, and 30 minutes. You can make hills one minute, two minutes, three minutes, 39 minutes. It's however you want to break apart the elapsed time and show it. If it's minutes, we use the hills to show that. And so that's kind of a review of what we talked about in the last lesson. Today we are focusing on finding the start time. Okay, and again, we're gonna use the same format of level one, level two, and then level three. Level three question being a word problem. So let's start with level one, which again is when they show you the digital clock and just tell you what time it is. So right now they're telling us it's 2.42. We did something for 39 minutes and we wanna know what time we started. So on our timeline, okay, we're gonna label the end time as 2.42. Okay, and the awesome thing about our hills and mountains strategy is we do the exact same thing that we did when we f were trying to find the end time. We mark it, we use our hills, and except now we're just going backwards, but it's the exact same strategy. So what I like to do here is I like to, because I'm subtracting and not adding, it makes it a little bit easier, I like to go to my next friendly number, okay? So my next friendly number is gonna be 240. By friendly number, I mean multiples of 10. If you don't know the multiples, that's okay, right? We're just talking about numbers that end in zero, basically, okay? So I'm gonna take two minutes from my elapsed time, which leaves me with 37 minutes left. And now I write down my time as 240, okay? That makes sense. So now I can take a big chunk because 40 minus 30 is pretty easy to do in my head. So if I'm taking away my seven minutes, I'm gonna have a nice big hill here of 30 minutes, okay? And if you notice, it's not exact science, but I made my 30 a lot bigger than my two, okay? My two probably could have been a little bit smaller, but as long as you're kind of trying to show the relationship, I think I'm happy with that, okay? So now if I'm going back 30 minutes, 40 minus 30 is going to leave me at 210. If you don't feel comfortable making that 30 minute jump, you can make three 10 minute hills and keep track of the time as you go. That's the beauty of the mountain and hill strategy is that you can break apart the hills into whatever um, intervals 
that you feel comfortable with. If you wanted to make 31 minute hills and keep writing down the time, you could do that. That'd take a long time and I don't think it'd be worthwhile for you, um, but you could do that if that's what you feel comfortable with. I can subtract by 30. You might just be able to do 10. So just keep breaking apart into groups of 10, keeping track of the time as you go. And again, you're gonna get the same answer if you did it correctly. Now I have seven minutes left, okay? I feel pretty um, comfortable subtracting 10 minus seven. You might wanna do seven one minute hills. You might wanna do a five minute hill and then a two minute hill, whatever you feel comfortable subtracting. Just keep taking away from your elapsed time as you show it on your timeline. So if I take away seven minutes now, okay, and seven minutes is supposed to be a little bit bigger than two, I kinda of messed up, but we're not perfect, right? 10 minus seven would be three. So now I know that I'm at 203, and when I subtract seven, I have nothing left, okay? Now this timeline, you could actually move down or do on another sheet. I know I'm kinda of getting messy right here, but I wanted you to be able to see everything we're doing. But if you need to, write the timeline down on another piece of paper. So now I start at 242, I used my hills to break it apart into intervals that I felt comfortable subtracting, all right? Thinking to myself, get to a friendly number first, that's what I always think. I now know that if I start at 242, if I did something for 39 minutes, that would have been 2.03 p.m. is my start time. Some of you are saying, Mr. Instruct Beats Dude, I can do 42 minus 39. Great, show it on the number line. If you can do it in your head, you can for sure show the work for it. Let's take a look at a level two question. If you were with us last lesson, you know that a level two question isn't really anything different. It's just when they give you the time in an analog clock, which goes back to our lesson about how to read time to the nearest minute, okay? So sometimes they're just gonna give you the clock instead of the time in digital time, like we just did before, or digital clock, sorry. And the first thing you have to do is you just have to turn this into a level one question by reading the clock. So if you need to zoom in, go ahead and zoom in, but I can see my hour hand is a little bit past the two, which means I know my time is going to be two something. Okay, and actually I'm gonna make this bigger. Now when you make it bigger, you'll see that the minute hand was, because right, each hour's, each hour uh, on the clock is five minutes, an hour is 60 minutes. But when you're reading the minute hand, you can count by fives, so five, 10, 15, and then it's not quite to the four, so now I'm gonna count by ones, right? 16, 17, 18, 19. So I can see that my end time was 219. It's not 220 because my minute hand is not on the four, it's at the interval before that, which is going to be 19. Let me make this smaller again. So now I've taken this from a level two question to a level one because I took the analog time and I wrote it down. So I know my end time is 219, okay? And now it gave me two different elapsed times. I did something for 13 minutes and then something for 14 minutes. So before I do anything, I want to add this up, okay? So I know my total elapsed time is 17 minutes, all right? So the first thing I wanna do if I'm working backwards is I want to find the next friendly number which is a number that ends in a zero, right? So if I want to go from 219, my next friendly number would be 210. So I need to make a nine minute jump. Okay, I'll just put a nine there. And that's gonna take me to 210. Now, we just, oops, 210, let me write that a little bit neater. I know I have 17 minutes of elapsed time, but what I wanna do is I want to actually come over here and I'm going to keep my subtraction going on over here instead of here, just because I'm so close and I know I don't want to run into my number line. You could do this on another piece of paper. So I had 17 minutes, right? And then I took away nine. So that left me with eight minutes left. Now I'm at a friendly number. In my head, I can do 10 minus eight. If you can't, then just break it apart into something that you can subtract. Make the interval something that you feel comfortable with. So I'm gonna take away eight minutes, okay? Which would probably be a little bit shorter than nine. And if I had 10 and then I took away eight, that's gonna leave me with two. So now I am at, something that got erased, 202. Then I, I'm going to take away my eight minutes, which means I have no elapsed time left, which means my start time was 202, okay? So again, if you noticed, I, all I did was turn my analog clock into the actual time. I wrote that down. 
I used my hills and then kept track of them as I went to make sure that I subtracted the correct amount of elapsed time. Let's take the leap to a level three question. So level three is when we're going to have word problems. So if you are a Instruct the Beats guru and you are a top fan, you've subscribed, you like all our videos, you know that we love our sides check strategy. So our sides check strategy is when you write a statement first. So my question said, what time did she put them in the oven? So I'm going to say Joni or she put the brownies or put them in the oven at blank time. So when I go back and look at this, I'm looking for anything about what she put in the oven and anything about a time. So Joni put brownies in the oven and let them bake for 32 minutes. That's about time. Okay, that's important. They came out of the oven at 4.51 p.m. What time did she put them in? Because I wrote a statement identified, I now know that this is an elapsed time problem which means to develop my plan, I'm not gonna do a tape diagram like we normally do on Instructive Beats. I'm simply going to label my start, my elapsed, and I just put, do like a little ELP for that, and my end. And I just wanna fill in what information they gave me. I know my 32 minutes is my elapsed time because my elapsed time is always minutes and hours, and my start and end time is always gonna be a time. They came out of the oven at 4.51, okay? So I know the event here is that they were baking brownies, which means if they came out, the event is over, which means that is my end time, okay? So they came out at 4.51 p.m., and you're looking for the start time. Let me go give myself a little bit more room, okay? And then I'm gonna draw, as best I can, a timeline. Ooh, that, that's the straightest timeline I've ever drawn. And I know that I have my end time, which is gonna be down here, all right? So that's gonna be 4.51 p.m. And I know I have 32 minutes of elapsed time. Now again, what I wanna do first is get to the next friendly number. So if I take away one minute, that puts me at 4.50 p.m., okay? So again, I'm just gonna subtract one from my elapsed time, and I have 31 minutes more to go. Now that I'm at a friendly number, I'm gonna take out a big chunk. I'm gonna take out 30 minutes, okay? 30 minutes. And I know after 30 minutes, 50 minus 30 is 420. Again, if you want to do smaller chunks, if you want to take out intervals, intervals of 10 minutes, you could also do that. I have one minute left over because I'm keeping track of my elapsed time as I add it to my timeline. And so when I do one more minute, I'm going to end up 20 minus one is 419. I'll draw a little arrow right there, okay? Which means she put them in the oven at 419, okay? Let's go back and write it in the statement. We developed our plan, we did our equation, we solved it, we put them in at 419, okay? Hopefully what you've taken from this lesson and the previous lesson is the same strategy is applied to both questions or both types of question. You have your start, your elapse, and your end. You always label those, fill in what you know, and then you draw a timeline, and whether or not you're looking for the start time or the end time, you're still going to keep track with your hills. You're still going to write it on your timeline and then keep track in your plan that you developed up here. Oop, and I forgot to take away my last one. Until you get to zero minutes of elapsed time. Then you know you're done. Thank you so much for checking us out today. Uh, as always, please like the video and subscribe. Leave an awesome comment if you want. You can leave a negative comment, but we prefer you not to do that. Am I right? Um, so please join us for our next lesson. Check out our awesome Elapsed Time song. Check out our other songs and videos. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. We hope this has helped you in some way and that you keep coming back to learn more math. Instruct the Beats, out.